Hey guys, uh, I just got back from a 10 day silent vipassana meditation retreat here in Thailand and I wanted to tell you a bit about it because some people were asking me to tell them how it went and also I haven't been able to speak for 10 days so I'm just like blah 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 to everyone who I meet right now. Um, so when you first get there, you register online first and then you get there, they take away your phone because they don't want you to have any contact with the outside world, but also your pens, papers, any books you have, musical instruments, musical listening devices, none of that's permitted. They don't want you to disrupt the meditation flow or try and ver like intellectualize your, your thoughts or your theories on meditation. So. Uh, that was cool. Uh, and then they took my purse as well with my money in it. I thought, why? It's not like I'm going to buy anything here. Anyway, whatever. They they took that. And um, you live quite a, a nun-monk-like existence for those ten days. You have to observe the five precepts, which is don't kill or harm anything, don't steal, don't take drugs, don't have sexual misconduct, and... What's the last one? don't tell lies <laughs> and for this reason they instill uh, they insist on noble silence which I thought would be a bit weird but actually I totally see why they they insist on silence so it means you can't talk to anyone you can't even gesture at anyone say so all of this you can't write a note to them you can't even smile at them not you're not supposed to anyway but obviously I'm just like um, and so when I got, when I first got there it seemed quite weird I thought I'd come to a mental institution of some kind because there's all these women standing around mostly wearing white loose pajamas just looking around looking around walking slowly no talking even when they walk past each other it's like they're not looking at each other you know so I was like oh gosh this is kind of scary but <laughs> one and a half days in I was also like looking around looking around, sort of floating around, looking, I mean, it's set in a beautiful place, you're surrounded by mountains, there's no pollution vehicles, there's wonderful butterflies, and it's just a perfect setting to, to be calm and concentrate. And uh, by the fourth, end of the fourth day, I think I'd broken three of the precepts, I'm not going to tell you which ones they were, and I'd also broken the, the silence because I was accidentally talking to a baby lizard in my room. And the minute I did, I was like, oh! <laughs> and obviously, sometimes I would just have to catch myself singing, you know, I just just would start singing and then be like, oh no! Because <laughs> you have your own room and you have your own bathroom, which is really good, because as I understand for many of these centres, you don't have your own bathroom. Um, the facilities are, are great. I mean, they're more than adequate. It's clean. It's, you know, my mattress was this thick. Uh, you have cold showers. You have wonderful food. I just couldn't believe how good the food was. And it was vegan, which was really surprising. So that was great as well. And uh, the bell goes at four o'clock in the morning. You wake up and you meditate for two hours. You have breakfast, then you meditate for three hours and you have your last hot meal of the day is at 11 in the morning. And then you have fruit and tea at five and then nothing until the, the next morning for breakfast, which sounds pretty hardcore, but many people who meditate seriously, they just eat once a day. So I was like, oh, thank God I have two, two meals a day. Um, but surprisingly, you know, you feel better than you think you will. I mean, I had much less sleep and much less food, but I had just bursting, I was just bursting with energy all the time. I didn't even want to sleep in the breaks when I could sleep, you know. So it was a pretty weird experience. All in all, you sit each day for 10 hours at least meditating in silence and they give you a bit of instruction, but there's no visualization, there's no chanting or verbalization. It's more just kind of observation of your sensations and stuff like that, which is interesting because I've not not really seriously dabbled in this art of meditation. You know, I, I like thinking, who doesn't? But yeah, so that was interesting, and I did think I was going crazy at one point. Everybody has a different experience though, you know, because you are alone with your thoughts and your minds interruptedly for about, you know, 10 days. And I have to say that that doesn't happen. I don't think that happens to anyone, anywhere, unless they are a monk or a nun. And one of the things which is just everybody will tell you who's done one of these courses is you want to chop your legs off 
almost every day because you sit cross-legged for hours and hours on end and you're in so much pain and then they're telling you you know observe the pain work through the pain you know if the pain is impermanent and you're like it's not impermanent it's been there for two hours and i feel like you know i'm gonna dislocate my limbs or something but i was kind of proud of myself i did pretty well i went to every session i um didn't move even if i was in so much pain i didn't i didn't leave early and stuff like that so that was definitely a few points for the determination but it was a hell of a mind roller coaster you know and i don't mean to sound dramatic but you know some days i would be meditating and i would cry tears of joy and others i would just be so tormented by my own mind but just like god just give me some kind of mercy right now i'm just trying to be a better person you know but all in all i'm really glad i went and i feel so lucky that they have it's they have these facilities for people like me who want to to learn this kind of stuff you know i want to be a, a better person i want to be able to really control things like you know being irritated or frustrated i want to be a more tolerant person so that way you can be a more kind of truly loving and compassionate person you know anyway that's blah blah but that's one of the the reasons that i went and i think it's incredible that all the staff are volunteers the course is completely free and you volunteer if you want to but only after you've done the course and the idea is you volunteer for the next the next um, students that come in and they run these uh, vipassana courses that's just the name given to this kind of meditation that the, the buddha discovered um, but it's totally not really religious you know so p christians and hindus and people from all different faiths are going to learn this this method of uh, meditation and they hold these courses all over the world as far as I'm aware um, and if you go to this website dharma.org then you can find out more information on that and I just thought it was so cool because I'm, I'm not really aware that such sophisticated facilities exist and it's so important that these people know what they're doing because I'm sure many people kind of go a bit crazy or a bit off the rails and if it's not handled in a proper way then that could be not have the right you know effects but if you do decide to undertake this course which I strongly recommend you do because I think you've got 10 days to lose but everything to gain you might, you might lose your mind in the process but you know probably not and it's just wonderful and you you kind of like the feeling of that you are having this experience because of the graceful charity of other people is is humbling in its own right so I understand why they they kind of took away the money you know and they take away it's like you feel like you have no no privilege no no rights not in a human rights way but you don't have a right to good food you don't have a right to say oh i'm paying for this therefore i should have this and i, I, I would like this you just live like a monk and you take what what others have given to you so out of love you know out of their own spare time they would like to, to volunteer and help you and the staff are, are so nice but i'm just speaking from this particular center which i understand is the best center in thailand it's the one near lampun near chiang mai so if you're around or you're traveling around then it's really worth doing i think like i said you've got nothing to lose um i'm really really glad i went and it's so strange to be back i'm sure you can hear i've got like t tons of traffic going outside my window oh dear i uh, i hope i'm gonna be okay um in a few days time I'm going to Malaysia to see my daddy I'm going to stay there for a week and also my uncle's not been well so I think he'll be okay though so I'm going to go go there and it's going to be seriously great to be back and see my dad and then after that I'm going to move to the Thai Burma border to start that three month volunteer post position and we'll see how it goes from there it depends on the finances but if you know me I'm all over the place anyway so that much can be expected but yes dharma.org please go check it out and i um, didn't want to tell you too much about it in terms of the actual technique that they ask you to you know to practice because i don't want to spoil it for you guys and giving it's best to go with an open mind with no expectations of how it will go but i just think try it if you're even mildly you know, remotely interested in that kind of stuff, then I think you should try it.
but yeah, Whew, I'm back in the real world. How scary. Anyway, uh, I gotta go now, so lots of love. Gotta catch up on emails that have accumulated in 12 days. So um, take care of yourself. I hope you're all doing well. And if you've had any of these kind of experiences before, then please write me and let me know. It would be kind of cool. And otherwise, peace, love, harmony, and compassion to all. Mwah.